Hey math friends, if you are feeling frustrated and drained because you cannot get students engaged in your math lessons, this video is for you. I'm Brittany Heggie, the math obsessed educator behind Mix and Math, and today we are going to talk about four free easy to implement ideas to immediately boost engagement in your math classroom. The first idea I like to call tic-tac-toe, show what you know. Now, the first time I ever used this activity, it was to essentially bring out students' background knowledge about a topic. So it's an extremely easy activity to set up. If you can write on your desks with dry erase markers, be sure to test this out in a small area before you go around and draw tic-tac-toe boards on everybody's desks. But I would use a dry erase marker and draw a big tic-tac-toe board right on students' desk. If you can't write on their desks, then you can just use a paper and do one big tic-tac-toe board on the piece of paper. Then you wanna group students in groups of two. Now you can do one student versus another student, or you can do a pair of students versus another pair of students. Whenever I'm doing a game, I actually really like to do two on two because of the discussion. The partners can work together and discuss the math and then take their turn. And then the other pair of students can do the same thing. So I really like doing games two on two, but you could do this one on one. And so for this activity, the first time I did it, when we were trying to bring out their background knowledge, I gave each group of students sticky notes. So one group would have the pink, the other group would have the green, and that was kind of how they notated their X's and their O's was based on the different colored sticky notes. Now I would give them a topic or a prompt on the board and basically say, I want you to show what you know. And so the first group of students would take their sticky notes and they would write down one thing that they knew about that math topic. If we were trying to uncover their background knowledge, there weren't a whole lot of parameters there. So they would write something down and they would put it on the tic-tac-toe board. Now the other group of students, or just one student if you're doing one-on-one, -on -one, they would have to evaluate whether what that person wrote down was true or not. So say we were talking about geometry and a student wrote down something about polygons. The other, um, the opponent would have to figure out if that statement was accurate or if that, you know, vocabulary word or that figure that they um, put on the sticky note, if that really was a polygon. If the opponent deems that that is correct, then they move on and they take their turn. And obviously there can be some discussion there if you know the opponent says this isn't correct, then they have this debate. Isn't that wonderful? They're talking about math. They're debating about math. That to me is a win right there. So the opponent then takes their different colored sticky note and they write down something they know about the topic and they place it on the board. And again, the opponent evaluates it, they discuss and so forth. And so they keep going back and forth, obviously being really strategic about where they place their sticky note because the whole point is to get three in a row, but they're doing so much math in this. They're either recalling what they know about a topic or they are discussing with their opponents about the math topic. And then after I call time up, we have all of these things written on sticky notes about this concept that we can discuss as a whole group. And so this activity doesn't just have to be about collecting background knowledge. It can be a list of vocab words. And so in order for students to take their turn, they have to choose a vocab word from a list, write the definition, and add that to the tic-tac-toe board. It could be that you have a list of problems and students have to choose a problem, solve it together, and then put it on the tic-tac-toe board. And the great thing is the opponent then would check over the other students' work. So there's really no limit in how you use this activity. Students love it, it's highly engaging, and of course they are doing all sorts of math work and evaluating the work of other students. My second free idea for immediately boosting engagement in your math classroom is to stir up a math debate. Now, obviously we don't want students arguing, but if they are arguing respectfully about math, that is a good thing. So there's a lot of ways you can stir up a math debate, but let me give you two ideas. One, you can give a situation where two fictional students are debating about a math idea and the students in your classroom have to debate about who is right. If you really wanna get in depth with this, you could have students, one, figure out who is correct between the two students, but then also have students figure out why the other student might think they are correct. This is actually a really, high, it requires a really high level of thinking because students have to kind of dig into this fictional student's misconception. So figure out which student is right, figure out why the other student may think they are right, even though they are really wrong, and give students an opportunity to debate about it. 
Another idea for stirring up a math debate that I absolutely love, we used this strategy all the time, was to post a statement and have students figure out if that statement was sometimes true, always true, or never true. Of course, if you're doing it online, post that statement and give students an opportunity to respond in the comments about which one they think it is, sometimes, always, or never. So if you're not sure what kind of statements to choose, I'm gonna give you a couple examples. One would be one third is bigger than one half. Is that statement sometimes true, always true, or never true? Let me tell you, most students will go with never because they're like, of course one half is bigger than one third. Even if every single student chooses never, you can still have a great math debate about this because as soon as you tell students that's actually not the answer and pull that answer off the board, well, now they've got to figure out why. And so give students an opportunity to talk about that. And spoiler alert, the answer is actually sometimes because sometimes one third is actually greater than one half. Think about one third of a large pizza and half of a personal pan pizza. That one third is going to be bigger than the half in that situation. And that actually gets students to recognize that we have to be comparing the same size holes. If you get a few students who come up with that, that's fantastic because there's your debate right there. You'll have some students who think sometimes and then you'll have a ton of students who think never. Other examples would be multiplication makes numbers bigger or when you multiply by 10, you just add a zero. Both of these examples are actually getting students to recognize that these are things that they've been taught before, but as we see when we get to fifth grade and we're working with decimals and we're working with fractions less than one, we see that these statements that we always thought were true actually are not true all of the time. So this quick engagement idea does two things. One, it obviously is addressing misconceptions, which is not the engagement side of it, but it is getting students to think and argue we should use the word debate, not argue, debate about math. And because of that, students are engaged. It's very different than them just working on a worksheet where it says, you know, compare one third and one half. Students are having to think critically and they're given the opportunity to voice their ideas. Another way that I love to boost engagement in my classroom is to add an element of mystery. Now there are two things that I think every single math teacher should have in their cabinets in their classroom. And that is brown paper bags and envelopes. The reason for this is because they are so versatile and as soon as you hide something in a bag or hide something in an envelope, students immediately, it piques their curiosity. They immediately want to know what's inside that envelope or that bag. And so this, element of mystery idea can be as simple as writing answers to problems on an index card, putting it in an envelope, and giving students this challenge to figure out what is inside each envelope. You can tell them they have to unlock the envelope by getting the correct answer. Very, very simple idea, but it just adds that little boost of engagement. Now, if you wanna get a little bit fancier, you can actually use the paper bags to hide things inside. So I love hiding manipulatives in bags. And there's a couple ways that you can do this depending on what your learning target is. So if you watched one of my previous videos, I hid different pattern blocks in the bags and students had to feel inside the bag and feel the attributes of the pattern block in order to determine the shape. This allowed students to determine the number of sides and pay attention to the angles rather than just looking at a square and saying, it's a square because it looks like a square. So that was one way to use the paper bags and students loved it. Let's say you're working on place value. Another idea is to put a set number of base 10 blocks in the bag, tell students the value of the blocks in the bag is, you know, whatever the value is, and there are this many blocks in the bag and students have to work with manipulatives on their own to figure out what base 10 blocks are in the mystery bag. So it's just adding that element of mystery that's a whole lot more engaging for students instead of just having them model a number. So anytime you're planning a lesson, ask yourself, how can I make this a little bit more mysterious? How can I get students to guess what is hidden inside a box or a bag or an envelope? And I promise students will be just a little bit more engaged than they would be had you not done that. My very last tip for you is to make it a game. Anytime students are playing a game or they are competing, they are immediately more engaged. There are countless ways for you to make the activities that you're doing in your classroom into a game. While I did a video last week all about review games, I wanna give you three quick ideas for making your math activities into a game. First, use an online platform like quizzes 
or Quizlet Live. Those are actually two of my favorites. Quizlet Live, I would use more for math vocabulary or quick facts. This isn't really one you would use for problem solving or computation. Quizzes is a fantastic platform. I talked a bit about it in my last video, but I love quizzes. It is not time-based, which I think is really important. And so you can take that math worksheet that you were using, put it into quizzes, and you immediately have a game. So use an online platform like that. Another idea is to use a game board with the activity. So pair students against another student and have them complete a problem in order to take a turn. I have a bundle of engaging math game boards that I will link to in the description of this video, but you can use them with any math concept. So they're extremely versatile, students love them, and it immediately adds that element of fun to your activity. The last way that you can turn your math activity into a game is to group students together and have them work together to earn something. So it could be earning an opportunity to shoot a basket into a trash can. You could give students the opportunity to earn a chance to bowl on your classroom bowling alley. Now I know that sounds fancy. It's really just plastic cups and a small ball and students bowl with it. It's so funny how students get so excited about these small actions, but again, it just boosts engagement for your students with work that you're already doing. Most of the things that I mentioned in this video require very little prep and you likely have everything you need already in your classroom in order to carry out these ideas. So I hope you are able to take these ideas, use them in your classroom, and immediately boost the engagement for your students. If you have other fabulous engagement ideas that you use with your students in your classroom, be sure to let me know what they are in the comments. I would love to see them and share them out with other teachers in our community. Be sure to check out the links in the description, and I cannot wait to talk math with you again soon.